Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. I'm um, going to get stuck into the timing chains as I've been promising for weeks and weeks, I know, uh, and had a bright idea that uh, having reviewed the process online, it's probably a good thing if I just drop on top of the block the um, overhead cams. I've got them in the garage, they've all been skimmed up as you know, so I'm just going to pop those onto the top of the engine just to help me when I'm doing the alignment and I'll talk you through them in just a second. So here they are all in their glory and um, as I say uh, you know that I've had them skimmed and uh, refitted so they're all ready to go. Uh, I've got to adjust the other left hand overhead cam in just a second but just to talk you through the anatomy here this is what has the uh, the cog on off the engine the timing chain sprocket is on the front of this and we have to be aligned to top dead center which is interestingly just here and to here there's some slots in the, um, the first journal and uh, these two have to align to make sure the cams are all in the right place all these different lobes are obviously for inlet and outlet valves on the engine itself um, so I've done it with this one um, now I need to come back to the uh, left hand one where you'll see some kind soul has actually left the uh, lock washers <laughs> Uh, tied up with string on the uh, sprocket uh, sprocket pulley. So uh, I'm just going to work this around now and uh, what I've worked out is that there's a, a spanner here that you can attach to the back of the cam to actually rotate it because obviously it's out of the engine, it's not turning under its own steam or with anything else attached to it other than that. So um, I've been using an adjustable spanner just in the gap here to um, to start to, to move it over. So that's what I've been doing. So it's a bit of a fiddle but basically this uh, square drive at the back of the cam actually drives the cam around. You just have to be very careful how you do it um, and you can see the whole cam is moving across and around and um, as the springs resist it obviously it's uh, going through some flat spots and some easier spots depending on where I'm at but just got to be a bit careful don't damage anything in the process. This may give you a slightly better view as we move towards our mission, which is to get the thing to the right spot with the markings on the cam. And that is moving slowly. I just overdid it actually. There's obviously spring, uh, springs in here, which you just saw pop over. Um, so it's not wanting to actually go to where I need it to get to. It's about another half an inch rotation towards you. All right, well, I think I've um, got to the point I wanted. If you can just see there, there's a slot in the uh, drive pulley for the sprocket, and they align with the two marks here in this top journal here. And for convenience, I will just mark them up with a bit of Tipex so it's more clear to everybody. Um, interestingly, you'll also see the, um, the purple mark. If you see a purple mark here, for those that were watching yesterday, you would have seen there was a purple mark on the back of the sprockets so it'll be interesting to get these on the engine in a minute and just see how they all align but uh, that for me is top dead center with the lines here so this is a top tip from Harry to Stag just to be able to clearly see the marking if we just mark on here with the Pentel liquid ink tip X marker um, this will become more clear I'm sure as I paint this on I can just see it and do it so you can see it as well that's where your mark is. All right, so that's aligned correctly on the camshaft now and uh, will be a good reference to come back to as we work through. And again, the same on this one. Seems to be a slightly deeper groove on this particular pulley for some reason. Don't know why that is, but um, I'm sure the principle is all still sound. And again, you get the idea of how we can now align our cams to our chains when we get to the engine itself. Just a minor point, but just to be aware, obviously, when you are turning the cams, the, uh, uh, the valves are moving. So this one's open, as you can see, and uh, that's all good. But just be careful it doesn't pinch the uh, cloth underneath. There's no damage done here but uh, obviously I'll need to take those out before we get it started. Not that it'll make much difference, I wouldn't have thought, but um, just bear that in mind if you're on a flat surface. Um, that's why it's on a rag behind, just to protect it from uh, graunching on the tabletop or the uh, ground, obviously, if it was on the ground. 
So clearly having thought about this, uh, I wouldn't have thought it's wise to put metal to bare metal on the block itself. So I have come up with a cunning plan, but if you've been watching Friday Night Trunnions, you'll be very aware that we enjoy a bit of real ale. In fact, here is uh, Harry's uh, beer selection from last week. He did say he liked all of them. Uh, I don't know if he actually finished all of them, but uh, they were his. And uh, underneath is my special favourite uh, old speckled hen, which is uh, very automotive. I'll explain why in a different video, uh, but I'll just show you what I'm going to do with these. Now, as I'm sure you are already aware, we're not that conventional, we're not trained mechanics, but uh, common sense hopefully does prevail. Um, what I'm trying to do here is just do a very, very temporary head gasket without actually using the head gaskets I've bought and make them into a template such that it will protect the metal. And I'm uh, going to cut them out with this pair of scissors very shortly and we'll be able to fit them on the engine block itself, just as a temporary solution whilst we do the timing chains. And as you can see, I've just cut some holes here so that the uh, long bolts uh, coming through here will be able to support it and it won't interfere with the engine whilst we're doing the timing chains. What I haven't shared with you so far is that um, I did order a whole lot of parts from Rimmer Brothers the other week and um, I've got lots of cylinder head bolts here uh, a couple of engine mounts, new engine mounts, there's some rocker cover gaskets as well as various washers and nuts and bolts that I actually needed to do the cylinder heads proper when we get to it, including some um, rocker cover uh, barrel nuts they are that go on the top, so that's all good. Um, I think I've discovered a bit of a problem because the idea, as I'll come back to you in just a moment, was to put the um, heads on so we can do the timing chains. Um, I'm just going to put these studs in, which I have started to do, and they're all okay, that's fine. But they've also got some shorter engine bolts uh, that go high up on the, uh, on the cylinder heads. And um, whilst these two here are fine, what I have noticed, and I don't know if you can see it there, but the actual uh, thread in this one looks like it's had, it, had its better day. It looks like it's de-threaded. You can just about see it there. Um, now we happen to know a guy who's quite handy who came to sort um, Harry's MGBGT out back in the summer, who specialises in getting locked nuts and bolts out, studs out of um, engines and stuff like that, because uh, obviously that would not be a good thing to have. And I just wonder if this hadn't been fixed properly before, that could be a reason why the gasket wasn't that secure, therefore water was leaking, therefore the cylinder head gasket might have blown and that's why we found it with the heads off originally. So um, I'll carry on with the job as we plan to do but uh, it's definitely one that I'll probably need to pick up with uh, our friend and I'll have to look up his details and ask Harry who he was. But he was a nice guy and uh, I'll film him when he comes round. So yes, I think we have a problem. Um, if you look at some of the good holes, which uh, one would be here, Look at the depth there. If I just take a, a feel for how far that screwdriver blade goes in, uh, you can see clearly there it's that depth. And uh, the next one along, yeah, that's the same. Uh, the one at the end is indeed just about the same. And then we get to this one, and look, that's as far as it goes in. So we are about an inch short. And having looked really carefully into the hole, I don't know if you can see it or not, you may or may not be able to, um, there is, you know, just see the silver at the back there, that I believe is a stud that's been left in there. So we're gonna have to get that drilled out and the whole thing um, re-threaded. But at least we know partly one of the reasons why this engine was US, uh, which isn't insurmountable. He says confidently when we get this plate round that Harry knows uh, to have a look at it for us. So onwards and upwards, um, you will now see we have the uh, TR Tony temporary head gasket in place with a couple of studs coming through and now I'm going to put the left hand bank of the uh, engine uh, overhead cams onto the uh, engine itself and interestingly the left is defined, it actually has got it, has got it written on but looking from the back of the engine forward that's left, that's right, um, top dead centre is the left cylinder here as we said yesterday. Now, for those of you who are really observant, um, you may have noticed that uh, I missed a trick here because if you can see this, the top of the um, uh, engine bolt itself has a slot in it and I put the other two in the wrong way. So we've now taken them out and you can see here, I can now tighten these up if I wanted to, just screw them in externally. In fact, I don't think these hold much tension um, once the uh, engine's in, but um, it's useful just currently just to tighten them up a little bit just to take the weight of the head itself when I put it over the top 
in a moment. Okay, and uh, just enter stage left is the engine cylinder head. So I'm just going to try and drop it onto here. Definitely do not want to drop this because these things cost, believe it or not, thousands of pounds. I was quoted about three and a half thousand pounds for a new one of these, new set of these uh, the other day, uh, or a few months ago when I was uh, just making some inquiries. So uh, very pleased that we got these with the engine. Okay, so I think that's on. And I'm just gonna put another bolt through just to hold it in place. Okay, so just having learned from the other side, what I'm basically doing is just, they are actually the same threads I hadn't realized. And in fact, the studs, the long studs go at the top, I think, and these ones go at the bottom <coughs> once it's all done. But I've literally been going through every single one of these holes here, just making sure that uh, they, they fit in and they screw in nicely. And this side is actually okay, I'm pretty sure. Uh, without exception, I've done this line all the way through, just heading back this way, and uh, just literally with a uh, uh, 11 16th, this is, uh, 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 socket, uh, beg pardon, with a ratchet spanner, uh, just testing out that it all works, which it does appear to do. So I'm reasonably comfortable with that. Just seems to be that one thread on the other side, uh, which is the problem. <coughs> I'm hoping we can um, resolve that, otherwise we will be in big trouble. Um, anyway, I did say I'd share with you the ups and downs of doing this, didn't I? So uh, uh, you heard it first here at uh, Alley the Stag. Stag Central. But yeah, th these are all okay. So uh, as you can probably uh, see me just off camera there a moment, just up the end there. But um, no, I'm pleased with that. This side, the uh, right-hand side as you're looking at it is all good. It's just the left-hand side we need to sort. And we've done the same for this side. Uh, two long bolts in. The uh, TR Tony patented Triumph Stag gasket, temporary version. And I'm just going to get the head and stick that on as well. So bear with me. I'll just go off camera for a second. I do not want to drop this, as I keep saying, because these are expensive items of kit. So I'm going into these top holes here, I think. Um, just gently, gently, gently does it. Without damaging anything, that would not be good. It's obviously a way of doing this which I've yet to learn. Huh. Okay, that goes in there. Okay, so I've learned from that experience that they were probably in the wrong holes. I think they're at different angles actually, which is why it was a bit tricky to uh, try and attempt that before. So I've gone as I did with the first one, which is basically putting a stud at each side on the south bank so to speak and I'll try again with the cylinder head to make sure that that goes in in the right place this time. They're quite heavy as you'd expect. Okay so I'm half in that's good. I uh, just need to move this sprocket out a little bit. It's not quite moving well enough. Uh, indicates I might need to take these bolts out of the uh, drive sprocket because they're fouling on the cam as I'm trying to drop it in. So let's pull it out again. Luckily they're not on too tight, just finger tight so I can hopefully drop it in. I had thought that these ears that come out the engine were supposed to hold the sprocket clear, timing chain sprocket clear of this procedure but maybe they've been adjusted over the years it's been in a barn. Um, so let's just try that. I think we're making progress. Slowly but surely. Yep, we're getting there. Okay, I think we're down. That's good. Mm -hmm. 